The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of Between Terramina's and Oriented with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and also those watching on Oriented with Television. I'd like to first uh, congratulate our first two state champions of the 2022-2023 school year, um, Bloomfield Hills um, winning the um, Boys State Tennis Championship in Division One um, with a, um, 34 points. Um, several individual players also won state titles as well. Um, Troy was placed second with 24 points. Rochester was seventh with 13 points. Um, Adams was ninth with 10 points. Stoney was tied for 13th with Eight points, and Troy Athens rounded out the representation in Division One with um, a 17th place finish with four points. Um, in Division Two, Seahome, of course, finished second behind Midland Dow with 21 points. Midland Dow won the Division Two title with 29 points. Groves was tied for fifth with 18 points, and North Farmington was tied for 11th with only six points. Um, and also, um, in girls golf, um, Coach Jeff Cushman, of course, I know him very well from his days coaching girls basketball, won their first state title, dominating fashion at, Bed- at Bedford Valley in Battle Creek, um, 47-stroke domination over the field. They had 629. Brighton was second with 676. Rochester was third with 681. Troy Athens and Troy were both 7 and 8, respectively, with Troy Athens shooting at 699. And... Um, Troy shooting a 7-10. So congratulations to both Adams and Bloomfield Hills winning Division I state titles this year in girls golf and also in boys tennis, respectively. Um, Of course, the postseason, not that far for other sports as well. Soccer, they've already started their postseason. Um, And also girls volleyball about to start their postseason coming up um, in a couple weeks. So a lot to look at heading into the postseason, to say the least, for sure. Um, let's go to football. Obviously, when you look at the rankings, you look at the standings, it's starting to become pretty clear how the postseason's going to work. look. Um, let's recap some of these games. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot to talk about heading into um, Week 9, of course, playoff positioning on the line for a lot of these teams. Um, we're going to break those down as well. Um, let's recap the in week eight games. Um, let's go from the gold. Um, of course, um, Ferndale beating Pontiac 60 to six. Um, Ferndale winning the gold title. Now, does it guarantee Ferndale being in the playoffs? Probably not because for Ferndale, you know, their record, they sit at, I think they're four and four right now in a really tough spot. Division two, um, you know, the wins really, I think Avondale's their best win right now, and they're in Division Three, so that, you know, it does help them in a sense, but that right now is their best win, and for Ferndale, they're going to have to win some games, you know, they're going to have to win, obviously, this week, you know, and hope, you know, for the best for them to get in the postseason, so that's my take on Ferndale. Pontiac, um, you really got to look at with them. Um, 0 and 8, um, state's longest losing streak. Can they break it this week against Garden City? That's the big question for Coach and Ken Wade and, and the Phoenix going forward. There, um, you know, it was going to be cha- it was going to be tough. I thought they, I thought week two was their best chance to win a game was that game against Mount Clemens, but they ended up losing that game in a really tough way to lose that one. Um, so when you look at for when you look at Pontiac, I mean. They still got a chance um, to win a game to close out the year. Um, we'll see what happens going forward with them. So that is something to really look at with them. Um, Avondale 42, Royal Oak nothing. Um, Avondale rolling at the right time. Um, <coughs> Tyler Herzog had a nice game um, for Avondale. Um, they have been on a roll since that North Farmington win. Um, really. With them, it's just they've gotten balance everywhere. Um, they've been dominant. Um, so 
Avenel looking really, really interesting to watch in Division Three for the postseason. I will be very curious to see what happens there going forward with Avondale. Um, and then on the flip side, Royal Oak. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to describe them. I mean, it is really hard to describe Royal Oak. Um, as I said last week, um, to be honest with you, this program has got some problems. I mean, it is no doubt, you know, when you look at Royal Oak. Um, you know, the fact that you've been outscored 84 nothing in your last two meetings, outscored 104 to 7 in the last three weeks, that is difficult. And you just have been through, you know, you've had some turmoil within the program. You're not scoring. You're giving up a lot of points. I mean, to me, this is a cultural problem that Royal Oak has right now. And it is something for sure that has to be addressed this offseason. Um, when you look at Royal Oak, um, I mean, like, you know, when you look at Royal Oak, you know, I mentioned it last week, you know, that this is a truly a struggling team, struggling program. And for Royal Oak, they have to change something. They got to change their culture. They got to change something, you know, to bring in a winner over there, Royal Oak. To me, when I look at Royal Oak, it, to me, it's just, it, I feel like with them, it's like losing is, is acceptable. And I know it's not, but but that's how I'm feeling like when you look at, and the numbers prove it. You know, the numbers really prove Prove it, you know, I mean, like, so that's something to really have to look at for Royal Oak. I mean, like, you know, I don't know the direction of the program where they're going to be at, but something there has to change if Royal Oak wants to, one, be a postseason team in the future and develop that program in the future. I mean, bottom line is you're not the numbers prove it. I mean, the numbers prove that you need to you need to change something over there. and. You know, and and it's proven. You know what I mean? Like that. You know, last two weeks, eighty-four nothing. <coughs> last three weeks, a hundred and hundred and four to seven. I mean, that something has to change when you look at Royal Oak. Something really. It, I'm serious. I'm being honest here. Royal Oak has got to change something if you know for them to get to that next step. I mean, like that's how difficult it's been for them. Um Truly, this season, you know, it's been a really difficult season. Um, a lot of positive, obviously, with Ellie Finch, um, you know, being crowned homecoming queen, made the news, and then he, and then the downside of it, you know, with the Dutch and Truett investigation. So, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, there's got to be something to, but I'll tell you what, they've got to change something over at Royal Oak because, you know, if they don't, then then they're going to continue down this path and losing games. I mean, that's got to change if you're, um, if you're, um, if you're at Royal Oak, you know, you got to change something, you know, going forward there. Um, and then there's Berkeley, um, uh, Berkeley, of course, they fell 56, seven to, um, to Groves. Um, <laughs> I mean, like it was going to be a top matchup anyway for coach Sean Shields and his team. Um, taking on a good Groves team. I mean, they're not a great team, but they're a good team. Um, it, But like I said with Berkeley, it's been just an absolute miserable season for them. Um, and it started losing week one to Milan. Um, they just didn't look very good. Um, <coughs> I mean, they just did not. They're, they're, they just didn't look good in, the, in the, all season long. I mean, they've had some blowout losses. They've had some tight losses. Their only win this year was against Pontiac, and you know, and that is, it, it's hard to explain. I mean, like, you know, really, when you look at a team that's last two years with a postseason team likely not making the postseason this year, um, it's, it's the bottom line is, you know, they've not gotten the job done. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, I thought I there was a lot of high expectations with me with Berkeley, and they, unfortunately, they haven't gotten the job done. Um, so that's something to that really, you know, I was just completely shocked, um, you know, to see how, how they've fallen, um, this season. And it's really unfortunate for them. Um, but they actually, they got two wins. I mean, they do have the, um, battle of Woodward trophy for another year, um, that, with them knocking off Royal Oak, but I didn't expect them to only have two wins this year. So, 
that's something to really look at with them. I, I was just really, really disappointed with Berkeley this season. So when you look at the gold, obviously, you know, you know, Ferndale winning the division, but they got a, they got, a, I mean, like, but there might not be a team. I mean, Avenel probably will be the only team that could get in the postseason from the gold and they didn't win their division. So that tells you something right there. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, but Ferndale, they need a win to get a lot of help. I mean, that's how I'm viewing with the Eagles. I mean, <clears throat> win and get a lot of help. That's where I'm viewing Ferndale. Um, Royal Oak, Pontiac, and, um, Berkeley, you know, they've, I mean, like, they, um, it's been rough for all three programs, um, so we'll see what happens, I mean, Royal Oak, to me, I think they need a complete culture change, um, Berkeley, I, I think with them, you know, they just had, hoping this has been a hiccup this, uh, this season with them, and then Pontiac, of course, you know, just finding that next step, you know, so that's how I'm viewing it right now in the gold division right now, describing the, um, this division. Um, let's go now from the gold to the um, blue. Um, obviously, Farmington knocking off Seaholm behind the play of him. Keyshawn Wilson, um, who took a touchdown, who took a kickoff back for a touchdown. He had a big game against Seaholm. Um, to me, this was a shocker because I didn't expect Farmington to you know, play like they did in the second half against Seaholm, outscoring them 32-7 to in the second half. Now, I really like what Farm to TV 10 did. Um, they did like this red zone um, where they split between games between Farmington and Seaholm and um, Lake Orion and North Farmington. Um, I think that's pretty cool. I got to give them props over there. I, I really do. Um, you know, I got to give Farmington TV 10 a lot of credit there. I mean... They did a really good job with the split squad in the game um, of both games over there. Um, now, they could help. It helps because, you know, you have both North Farmington and Farmington, two, two, two teams in the um, – two schools in the same district. So, you know, I, I would love to see others start to do what they did. But I got to give props to Farmington TV 10 for doing a wonderful job with that, um, you know, going back and forth between both games. Um and I know Rich very well, very nice man, by the way. Um, he is a very good gentleman, by the way. So give them props there for that. But back to the game. Um, 32 some second half difference. Um, just shocked how um how um both Kenny brothers struggled, especially Colton Kenny. Um, just shocked that, you know, like, you know, see home, let's not forget, they're not a passing team. I mean, it's clearly they're it's clear they're not a passing team. I mean, they love to run the ball, obviously, with the Veer offense and all that. But I didn't expect Farmington, you know, they took it. Farmington took advantage of some steal mistakes. I mean, I do remember in that third quarter, they did recover a fumble off a punt. Um, That changed the whole complexion of the game around. So <laughs> that was a big difference in that game. Um, So when you really look at it, um. Farmington was the better team in the second half. Um, they earned the share of the blue title with Seaholm. They earned it. Um, so bottom line is, you really look at this game. Um, Seaholm, you know, they really, you know, I was shocked how Seaholm struggled in this game. I mean, now if you're Seaholm, you got to let this game go and forget it. You know what I mean? You got, you got your arch rival this week. So... If you're Coach Jim Dewald, you got to really find a way to break down. You know, you got to break down, obviously. You know, just forget about it and focus on Groves because it's your city rival, rivalry game. I mean, it's going to be really interesting over there in Beverly Hills. Um, so that's my take on Seahome. But Farmington right now, yes, you know, here's the thing, though. And I watched, the, I watched their games of the Red Zone broadcast um and here's the thing with Farmington I mean yes you know I know they I know they say six wins get you in the playoffs but but you know it, it goes by strength of schedule you know it goes by the strength of schedule six wins doesn't automatically qualify for the playoffs you know so that's my that's what I would say to Rich right now is you know six wins it used to qualify automatically in the playoffs but not anymore now they look at your strength of schedule, and they look at, of course, your quality wins. And Farmington's got some quality wins on there. 
I mean, <clears throat> I mean, like, they got some quality wins. That's really what it is right now when you describe Farmington is they got some good wins. I mean, so, yeah, Farmington's a playoff team this year, obviously. I mean, they are a playoff team. That's the bottom line. I mean, there's really no ins and outs about it. I mean, you know, they're definitely going to be in the postseason. So that's something to really, really keep an eye on um, going forward when you describe Farmington. Um, and then Troy. Troy over Troy. Athens 27-6. to I didn't expect this score because now Troy Athens was a turnover machine in this game, which was completely mind-boggling for me because I know how disciplined Coach Tom Cook's team's been all year. But they had five turnovers. I mean, they had five turnovers. Really, that's the bottom line in that game. I mean, when you turn it over five times, you're not going to win games. And that's really what happened in that game was Troy's. Yeah, and Troy's got a very good defense. That's no question there. But their offense showed up in that game. Their offense showed up. I mean, Parker Brandenburg, the quarterback, he was solid. I mean, he was solid. I mean, Darius Whiteside had a big night, and then um, Nolan Block. They both also had big nights as well. So when you look at Troy, in Troy Athens' case, basically with me, basically with Troy Athens, their playoff hopes are dashed because of what Troy did. Um, and they have Utica Ford coming up, and I don't think that's going to help them. Um, Troy, on the other hand, they got Frazier looming. Going like, what are you doing to yourself here? For Troy, it's like, why are you playing Frazier? No offense to Frazier, but, you know, I mean, it could help you if you played a, you know, maybe another quality team. Because when I look at your playoff, when I look at the Snooze News playoff map right now, you got Lake Orion right now. And that's, and that's according to Snooze News' playoff map, that's a horrible matchup for you if, if that were the matchup. If Troy played Lake Orion, you know, that would be a, just a horrible match for Troy. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> I mean, a lot of things still have to work. You know what I mean? So that's something to really, really look at going forward. This is a still a new playoff system. You know, we're still learning the ins and outs of it. Um, but strength of schedule is very important here. And I know the strength of schedule. I've not been really impressed with Troy's strength of schedule. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But. For Troy right now, they're looking good. They're going to be a postseason team for the second straight year, obviously. Actually, third straight year if you're counting 2020. Um, <laughs> but for Troy Athens, you know, playoff hopes are basically dashed right now. So we will see what happens there in that one going forward there. Um, and then you had Lake Orion, North Farmington. Lake Orion won 42-7 over North Farmington. Um, Ryan Shelby got benched. In that game. Um, and then um, for Tom Bogoyevich, um I thought, you know, when you look at that game, um, North Farmington's defense has been the biggest problem all year for Coach John Hurston. I mean, that's really what it is. Um, you know, when you look at Lake Orion's defense in that game, they were good all night. I mean, they were very good. The first string was very good all night. I mean, second string was played. Second string played pretty well. They recovered a fumble. Um, but we'll talk the Dragons in a little bit here. But North Farmington, um, you know, it's hard to describe them because coming into the year, I knew that they had a chance to be solid. Yes, Ryan Shelby was hurt most of the year, came back for the for the Troy Athens game. He played phenomenal in that game. And then <laughs> the um, Avondale game was a complete disaster for North Farmington. Um, and then, of course, Lake Orion last week. I mean, it's been a rough year for them. I mean, their win against Troy, that's huge for them. Um, that was a good win at the time. But then they had some tough luck losses. I mean, lost to, Farm to Farmington for the Farmington Cup, that overtime game. Um, you know, that was shocking, to say the least. And then serve lose and fall in the sea home in that one. That was, they've had some tough luck. Um... <laughs> But the Avenel game just absolutely is killing North Farmington right now. So when I look at North Farmington right now from a postseason standpoint, I just don't know if this team can make the playoffs. I just I just don't know if this team can really, you know, find a way to get in the postseason. It would be a very tall task, but I just don't think 
that they're going to be in the postseason this year. So, you know, when I look at the blue, obviously, you know, Farmton see home share in the league title this year, followed by, um, you know, Troy. You know, North Farmington was third, then Troy, then Troy Athens. So, kind of, you know, wasn't what I expected, but but it is what it is. So, congratulations to Farmington sharing the league title with Seaholm. Seaholm, same thing. Um, so, we'll see what happens going forward um, with the Blue Division going forward there. Um, let's go to the white. Um, you know, of course, they had the red-white crossover. Um, we're going to break down both teams. We're going to go white first. Um, you know, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, um, they won over Oxford 7-3 on a <laughs> stellar defensive effort in that game against Oxford. Um, you know, so it's a good win for Coach Dan Loria and his team. Um, second win of the year. Um, so we'll see what happens with them. I mean, they got North Farmington coming up this week. So, but still, it's a good win for them. Um, hoping to go to Ron Holland Field and finish the season strong. So we'll see what happens there in that game. Um, <laughs> For sure. Um, Oak Park. I mean, you know, 0-8, you know, it's stunning. You know what I mean? They fell 45-20 to Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, it was going to be a tough game for them. Um, but either way, I mean, like, they've, they've been, they've really been struggling all year long. And that is something that has to change for Coach Greg Carter and his team. I mean, they got to change something. Um, you know, the fact they don't have the talent that they used to be, that's been the big problem. They haven't been the same program since that Warren D. the Sal game where they lost in um overtime um in the postseason of the 2020 season. Um, where of course they played some games in the winter. Um, but still, I mean, like it's it's just shocking to see what's been going on with Oak Park. Um, <laughs> Going forward, I mean, like, it's 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 a tough task, to say the least. I mean, like, what's been going on with them. So, that's something to really watch for next year, to watch for is what's going to happen at Oak Park. Are there going to be some changes? Is there going to be some, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with them. So, we will see what happens surrounding Oak Park um, going forward there. Um, and then let's look at, um, you know, Harper Woods. Um, they they hung tough with Adams. I mean, I'll give them props. They hung tough with them. I mean, falling twenty to six. Um, but I gotta give Coach Rob Olden's team a lot of credit for just battling in that game. I mean, they battled, battled, battled. I thought defensively, despite the twenty points given up, they were solid. I mean, they I think they held Adams their lowest point total this year. Um, which says a lot. Um do I think Harper Woods is a playoff team this year? No, probably not because of the, um, you know, obviously being in the OA, it's a different challenge for them. Um, you know, being in a new league like this, you knew it was going to be tough. I mean, for Coach Rob on his team, I mean, it wasn't going to be an easy, easy um, transition into the OA for Harper Woods. It really wasn't. Um, I mean, now they said, I believe, three and five is a record. Um, <laughs> but if they can knock off Roseville, who knows what will happen. Um, but for me with Harper Woods, it's unfortunate for them that they're in, um, you know, they're in D2. Um, they're probably going to be back in D3 next year. So that is something to really, really watch for going forward there. Um, when describing, um, Harper Woods. So that is something to really watch for as we head into the next year. So Harper Woods, you know, I know they're going to miss the postseason for the first time in three years. Um, but <laughs> next year, I expect better things next year with the Pioneers. I mean, I think they're going to be okay. I mean, we'll see what happens. That we will see what happens. Um, describing Harper Woods. Um, Rochester. Um, actually, Groves. Let's go Groves. I mean, Groves, you know what? I mean, 56-7 against Berkeley. Um, they were just dominant. They were, I mean, they played well, um, you know, but they were dominant. But kind of that game, you know, 
they're getting ready for their arch rival. And at their playoff team right now for sure. Um, but when you look at Groves, there's still too many question marks I have with Coach Brendan Flaherty's team. There's just there's still a lot of questions surrounding the Falcons. They've got a lot of work to do ahead of them. Um, you know, yes, they're gonna be in the postseason. Could they play Seaholm two straight weeks? It looks possible. It really does look possible that Groves and Seaholm could play each other for two straight weeks. It, it, it's really there. Um, I mean, Seaholm just lost a tough one to Farmington last week, and it could happen. It could really much happen where I think it'll be a very interesting game. Um, it'll be a, I think it'll be a good game. I mean, you know, so we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to preview that in a little bit. But Groves, I, I still think, to me, they got some work to do. So we'll see what happens surrounding the Falcons. Um, and then there's Rochester. Um, when I look at the Falcons, um, they, they, won, they had won three straight until they played Stony Creek. And then some bad things happened. Bottom line with Rochester is this. You have not been able to beat your city rivals. You haven't beaten them again this year. You lost to Adams this year. You were, and then you lose to Stony Creek. This is the same problem I've been saying to, about Rochester during media day. Was, okay. Rochester's a team that they play well against teams that are not within the city. And then when they run in their city rivals, they tend to lose. So, and the stats don't lie here. Rochester's got a big problem against the city. They do. And I think that cost and that hurt them in their loss. That hurt them. Do I think Rochester's a playoff team this year? I don't know if they're a playoff team. Because that would have been a great opportunity for Rochester had they beat Stoney. I don't think Detroit Renaissance could help them. Maybe they can. I mean, maybe. I mean, Detroit Renaissance is better than you than people think they are. Um, but I, I, but clearly, when you look at the Detroit Public School League, obviously, you know, the two top teams in that league is Detroit Martin Luther King and Detroit Cast Tech. Detroit Cast Tech just knocked them off um, pretty convincingly. And now they play Birmingham Brother Rice for a postseason trip on the line. For Rochester, do I see them in the postseason? I don't know. Um, they do got a shot at it. I mean, they do got a chance. If they knock off Detroit Renaissance, I think they're five and four. <coughs> well, that's going to be a huge say right there for Rochester. I mean, we'll see with them. I mean, we will see with them. I mean, that is a big, I mean, they were second in the white this year. <coughs> but we'll see what happens to them. And then there's Southfield. You know, with A&T... They lost to West Bloomfield 42-28. Um, to me, defense is still an absolute problem. I mean, yes, they've been improved lately. They've improved better. They've been better lately. But to me, that defense is still a problem. I mean, you can't rely on Isaiah Marshall to just carry you in, in games. You can't rely on shootouts to win your games. You can't rely on that. Because if you do, you know, bad things are going to happen. Just imagine if you, I mean, like where South is at right now in the, in according to season's map, it looks like they're South right now in the Detroit. Could they take on Detroit Cast Tech in the first round or in the postseason in districts? Yes, that is possible. So with Southfield, you, for me with them, it's just for them, it's, you can't rely on shootouts. You have to win games defensively. And a and yes, they're athletic. Yes, they're solid, but until I see a defensive presence with A&T, I just don't know if I see them going anywhere. I mean, yes, I see a Marshall, the heck of a quarterback. He's a very good quarterback, but they have got to find something. They've got to find something, especially on the defensive side of the football. That's what A&T's got to do. If they can do that, then this is a football team that could surprise some people. But right now, it's defensively, it's still their biggest problem. 
I mean, that is going to be their problem once they get to the postseason. They got River Rouge this week. It's a tough matchup for them. Rouge is coming off a 19-18 loss to Warren DSL. And we know Warren DSL is one of the best teams in the state this year. So we'll see what happens in that matchup. We will. Um, and then let's go to the red. Um, when you look at the red, um, Oxford, this is a program that's hit rock bottom. They lost 7-3 to Bloopia Hills. Clearly, offense has been a problem. 23 points in the last five weeks. That's rough. That's rough. Your defense has been solid all season long. But the problem's been your, your offense. You've got to find something offensively. Yes, Dominic Cassis got hurt and didn't play in the Bloomby Hills game. But you got to find something offensively. It's going to be a tall, t- tall order this week in Chippewa Valley. But clearly, when I look at Oxford this year, this has been a team that's truly hit rock bottom. I mean, they're struggling. I mean, yeah, you know, yes, I mean, like, they've been through a lot. Yes, they've been through a lot. But, you know, it's clear to me, you know, th- this is a young offensive team. This is a clearly young offensive team. And they're showing it. And it's really and it, it, it's really rough to see with Oxford. It really is. So, you know, when you look at next year for Oxford, you, yes, they're going to be better next year. But, but you know, they're going to have to really be more creative offensively next year. I mean, <laughs> to say the least. So we'll see what happens with Oxford. Um, Stony Creek. They look good against um against Rochester winning 43-22. John Fogel had a big night for them. Um I mean Taylor had a big night for them as well for Stoney. Now everything comes to this for them taking on New Baltimore Anchor Bay. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that game. It will really be interesting to see what happens. Um <laughs> but they need some scenarios. Right now, according to the snooze to you, they're the last team in right now. So, they win, they're in. But nothing, nothing to it. Lake Orion, um, knocking off um, North Farmington 42-7 this week. Um, Billy Roberson had two touchdowns. Dominic Nova had a passing touchdown. Um, Tristan Hill had a big night for Lake Orion, two passing touchdowns. Um... It's a good win for Coach Chris Bell and the Dragons. Um, now everything goes into this game this week with Celine. Um, Celine has lost two straight games. They got a very good quarterback in CJ Carr. Both their losses have been a combined 14 points. Um, one was to Bedford, and then the other one was to um, Dexter. So we know how good those two teams are. Um, the Bedford one was a shock, but the Dexter one, you kind of. Thought you could have gone either way. But that'll be really interesting. Um, I know last year was 42-21 Celine over Lake Orion. Um, but I'm curious to see how Celine handles the trip to um, Lake Orion. So I'm very curious to see how that goes. Um, you know, so we'll see what happens in that one. But Lake Orion right now, offensively, they're looking good. Defensively, I thought they they were solid. Um but everything's on the line this week in Celine. You win that game, you're in. That's how I look at it. So we'll see what happens in that one describing the Dragons. Um, Clarkston. I mean, they looked really good against Lapeer. Lapeer was coming in undefeated. Um, but Clarkston just destroyed him 48-13. to And then to make it worse, they started their backup quarterback, Steven Kozak. I guess Mike Hine got hurt in that game um, against um, against Lake Orion. Um, but, you know, it was a shock that he didn't start in that game against Lapeer. Lapeer was coming in undefeated. But then again, with Steve McCutt, he did start the West Bloomfield game. They actually played pretty well in that game. Um, so when I look at Steve McCutt, you know, he is a playmaker. He can be. 
Now, yeah, it does help you have Ethan Clark. And it didn't help that your first play from scrimmage was pick six for a touchdown. But Ethan Clark, you know, dominated that game. He dominated Lapeer. Um, you know, when I look at Lapeer right now, I think they're in some trouble. I mean, they really are. Um, Clarkston defensively, Desmond Stephens got his ninth um, interception. That's a Clarkston record. Um, Coach Justin Pintar called that the most complete game that Clarkson's played all season. Yeah, I I believe it. I mean, I believe it. You know, they played really well. I mean, they were really impressive in that game. They were really, they played outstanding football. Um, they were good. They were very good against Lapierre. I mean, Lapierre was coming in undefeated, knocked off Grand Blank, knocked off Traverse City Central, just knocked off Grand Ledge last week. But you know, but you're playing a powerhouse like Clarkston. It was going to be tough. So, when I look at Clarkston right now, um, they're rolling with confidence, hanging their game with Oak Park. So, we'll see what happens in that game. We will. But Clarkston's right now heading in the right direction. Um, Adams knocked off Harper Woods 20-6. Both Pico brothers played very well. Parker had two touchdowns. Tate had a touchdown. <coughs> um... Again, Adams rolling right now. Their defense was solid. Their defense was outstanding again. So, Adams right now, when I look at the Highlanders, I mean, they are rolling right now. Um, oozing with confidence. Um, they're going to be heading to Runkle Field this weekend to take on Sterling Heights Stevenson. Um, so, we'll see what happens in that one. We will. And then there's West Bloomfield. Um, they were dominant against A&T, 42 28. Kenny Jones had two touchdowns. Samaj Morgan had a pick six for a touchdown. Um, you know, and, I mean, like, and then he was solid all night. I mean, West Bloomfield had a good defensive game plan for Isaiah Marshall. Huge credit for Coach Travis Grice, for Tyrese Grice and the um, Lakers. They were dominant in that game against A&T. Just impressive. I mean, like, you know, just doing enough to keep a very good offense down in A&T. So just a solid performance all around for West Bloomfield um, in that game. So really to look at it here, um, my take on the red, obviously, um, you know, so we'll see what happens. Um, you know, Adams, West Bloomfield, Clarkston, Lake Orion, um, um, and Stony Creek all came out with wins um, over white competition this week. Oxford had that tough loss to Bloomfield Hills. So we'll see what happens going forward. Um, let's now look at the um, let's look at the week um, nine games to close out the regular season. Um, and this is going to be very interesting. Um, this will be very interesting because there's some interesting games to watch. Um, around the league this week, so let's look at each game. Um, Royal Oak takes on Madison Heights Lampier. Um, Royal Oak's been, as I mentioned earlier, a team that's been in absolute complete turmoil. Um, 84 nothing last two weeks. Madison Heights Lampier is rolling right now. They are clicking on all cylinders. Um, this is going to be a very difficult matchup for, um, for Royal Oak, um, going down to Madison Heights, yes, it's a short trip that's going to help them, but <clears throat> it's a difficult matchup <coughs> to say the least. I mean, it's a difficult matchup. So, in this game, I'm going to take a Madison Heights lamp here over Royal Oak. Um, I just think that the Ravens, um, you know, the way that their season's been, it's been really rough for them, just really challenging for them. Um, you know, and they're going to need an off season where they're going to have to go through a complete culture change. Um, they have got to go through a complete change. This is not just a, you know, you know, like a, um, like a coaching transition or anything like that, but they've got to go through a complete culture change heading into this off season. That's how I view Royal Oak right now. They've got to go through that, um, for them to be successful going forward. 
Um, Berkeley taking on St. Clair Shores Lakeview. Um, this is a battle of interesting matchups. Berkeley, of course, runs the, you know, Lakeview's a wing T team, obviously. Um, this is a difficult matchup, to say the least, for Berkeley because defensively they've been complete. They've been rough all year long. Um, and it's going to be difficult for them. I mean, <laughs> if Berkeley offensively can find some sort of offense in this game, then they have a chance against the Huskies. But I don't know if I see that. Um, I just don't know if I see that. But in this one here, I'm going to take the team that runs the wing T. Um, apologies to Coach Sean Shields and his team here. But I got to go Lakeview in this one. The wing T will be too much in this game for Berkeley. Um, it's going to be a challenge for sure going forward in that one. So we'll see what happens there. But I've got the Huskies over the Bears in that one. Um, Ferndale against St. Clair Shores Lakeshore. The Shoreans and the Eagles. Ferndale's played a tough schedule. I mean, playing Grand Rapids West Catholic, it's not an easy game for them. Um, but they're a good team. Ferndale, they got a chance if they win to get in the playoffs. They're going to need some help, too. So, it's going to be interesting, to say the least, how this game's going to go. Um, Lakeshore, I know Coach Roy Ozadowski very well. Very good man. Very good coach. Um, it's going to be a tough match for Ferndale. But I think Ferndale's got a shot at this thing. I think Ferndale wins this game because of experience. I think they got a good chance to win this one. Experience matters in a game like this. It really does. So I got the Eagles in this one. Um, next is Avondale and Warren Fitzgerald. Of course, um, Avondale went to Warren earlier in the year. They played Warren Cousineau, um, won that one. Warren Cousineau has been a real surprise this year. They're having a good year this year, the Patriots. I got to give them a lot of props this year. The Patriots are having a good year. Warren Fitzgerald, on the other hand, had a tough year. The Spartans have really struggled. Um, and Avondale, you know, they've been picking things up at the right time. So when I look at this game here, I think the Yellow Jackets got a good chance to win this game. I think going back into Warren will help them. Only thing I hate about Avondale is their white uniforms. I just don't like those white uniforms. I just wish they changed them. Maybe get, maybe go to the yellow, maybe yellow, add yellow stripes to the um, elbows. I think it'll be good, you know. I think it'll be a good one. You know what I mean? I mean, you got, I mean, you're purple and yellow. I mean, like, why not? I mean, but you're still wearing those Adidas uniforms. I just can't stand those Adidas uniforms. Please get rid of them. But I think you're going to win. You're going to win for sure this game against Warren Fitzgerald. But I just wish you guys would just change the uniform. Just please. Your home blacks look very good. I really like the black uniforms. They look very good. Um, And then let's go to Pontiac and Garden City. Could this be Pontiac, a chance for Pontiac's first win? Garden City's been really improved this year. <laughs> I mean, they sit, they have four wins this year. I mean, they have five and four this year. They came off an emotional win against... um. Dearborn Heights Robichaud last week, winning in overtime 34-28. So it's going to be a difficult match for Pontiac. It is going to be really difficult. Um, But Garden City Channel the Pontiac gets also interesting as well for Pontiac because this is an opportunity for them to say, you know what, I mean, let's stop this losing. Let's stop it, you know. We have a chance to snap the streak. Do I see them snapping the streak this year? You know, I said earlier in the year, I said Pontiac would snap the streak. But I, but Garden City's really impressed me. They've been battle-tested. Um, they they played good football, obviously. Um, but I just think something with Pontiac, I think Pontiac's got a chance this week, and I think they're going to snap the streak this week. It would be devastating for Garden City if they lost this game. But... I just think something in my heart always tells me to never underestimate the underdog. 
And Pontiac is an underdog in this game. So I really like Pontiac in this one, the knockoff Garden City. I, I think they're I, I think Pontiac's got a great chance to win this game. I really do. Um, and then we go to the blue. Um, you got Troy taking on Frazier. Um, I just don't Frazier's really been struggling. They've lost four straight. Um, Troy's starting to roll a little bit. I got Troy. Troy by four scores. I mean, that's really all it is there. Um, then there's Troy Athens and Utica Ford. Um, you know, this one's interesting. Utica Ford's really hasn't been the same team. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take Athens. Athens gets their revenge this year. It's been a rough, it's been a, they're a young team this year. So, Athens will be better next year. They're going to be better next year. So, we'll see what happens there. But I, I clearly got the Red Hawks in this one over the, um, Falcons. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But I got Athens pretty convincingly over Utica Ford. Um, Farmington taking on Utica. Um, if this this game, if if there was one loss that hurt Rochester, this is it. The loss to Utica. I mean, Utica right now sits at one and seven. They just lost to Utica Ford a couple weeks ago. That's inexcusable. Um, Farmington's red hot right now. They are rolling right now. They are clicking on all cylinders. Um, when I look at this game here, um, you know, Dominic Pesci, Cam Petaway, Keyshawn Wilson, um, Farmington's been playing really good football. This game's at Falcon Field. Of course, it's going to be on TV 10 um, up in Farmington. Um, I just think Farmington's going to get this one here. And I don't think it's going to be close. Um, I think Dominic Pesci playing on senior night. He's going to have a big game. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. Um, but I just think Farmington too much. They're going to be dominant. They're going to cruise in this game. So we'll see what happens in that game. Um, let's go now to some blue versus white games. Um, North Farmington taking on Bloomfield Hills. This is North Farmington's homecoming. Also, this game be on TV 10 as well, part of the red zone um, package, obviously. Um, this matchup here is interesting. You got John Herstein versus Ryan Shelby. Or does or does your coach John Herstein go with Thomas Bozovich, who's he's been having a nice year. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's having a good year. I mean, you know, he was very, I mean, like, you know, I mean, but I got to wonder with North Farmington. Where the heck was Mo Co Will Coleman last week against Lake Orion? Where was, you know, they really struggled up front, especially against the Dragons. Um, and Bluey Hills is coming off an emotional 7-3 win against Oxford. Um, but this matchup here, if this turns out to be a battle of, of athleticism, <laughs> I would have to take North Farmington. I mean, coaching... Favors North Farmington. Um, quarterback play, no offense to C.J. Jackson, but Ryan Shelby, you know, he's a solid quarterback. Um, Thomas Belosevich is, is a good quarterback as well. Um, Camp Pamper is a solid at wide receiver. Will Coleman, um, don't know where he was last week against Lake Orion. Um, but in this matchup here, I'm going to take North Farmington because of the homecoming motivation, um, just finishing a season out strong. Um, I just think there's more motivation for North Farmington, you know, to, to look forward to next year, um, <coughs> and to build the foundation back up. I mean, like clearly, you know, you know, to get a program in there. I mean, I know that coach John Hurstein's had at least three, four years over there at North Farmington to get his program in there. It's clearly in there, but it's got to come down to personnel. And, you know, North Farmington right now, in my opinion, you know, they don't have that personnel right now, you know, for it to be, you know what I mean? It wasn't like the days at Harrison where, you know, you can just go from within the city, you know, to get players to play, you know what I mean? And now you're down to two in the Farmington School District with North Farmington and Farmington. Um, 
you know, but right now I just think with North Farmington next year, they need a off season, you know, to just get back to basics, get back to the thick of things, you know, then you're going to have for sure next year, you got Ryan Shelby coming back for a full season. Um, but it'll be a start if you can get this one in win over there against Bloopy Hills on your homecoming. So that is something to really look forward to. Um, I'm going to take the Raiders in this one over the Blackhawks. Um, and then you have um, Seaholm and Groves. This is a big, big game for both teams. Playoff positioning on the line. Both teams are postseason bomb. Likely it's possible these two teams can play in the first round. Um, in this game here, I think with, you know, Groves has had Seaholm's number in the past. Um, I know the game's in Beverly Hills. Um, this is going to be a tight game. Um, but I got Seaholm in this game. And the reason why is I think both Kenny brothers, they're going to be due for a bounce back game. I think Seaholm wasn't themselves in their loss to Farmington. Um, Groves, you know, I just don't trust um, their rushing attack. Um, Caden Hardy's a solid player, quarterback. Um, but when I look at this game here, I just, I'm just i going to take Seaholm. Um, I got them with confidence in this game. I mean, I just think that this is Coach Jim Newell's year over there to, to win bragging rights. But we'll see what happens there. I got Seaholm winning that game, though. Pretty, it won't be, it's going to be close. It'll be tight. So we'll see what happens in that game. Um, Rochester and Detroit Renaissance. Um, Detroit Renaissance is better than you think. I mean, they really are. I mean, Rochester going down to Detroit, um, that's going to be a tougher game than you know, than you think it is. Um, obviously Rochester is more structured than Detroit Renaissance, but, in this game here, I just don't know where Rochester's heads are at after their loss to Stony Creek last week. Um, this is a game Rochester should win, but I don't know if they're going to. I'm going to take Rochester by a, by a touchdown in this game. I, I don't know if I trust Detroit Renaissance right now. I just don't know if I can trust the Phoenix right now. So we'll see what happens in that one, but I'm going to take the Falcons um, over the Phoenix in this one. Close. Really, really close. Um, then there's Harper Woods and Roseville. Roseville's not a bad team. I mean, they're going to give... Roseville's going to give, um, you know, Harper Woods some problems. I mean, Harper Woods, yeah, they've struggled this year. But I think Roseville's... I think Harper Woods, they got a good chance. I think they have a chance to win this game. They do. But I'm going to take the Panthers in this one. I got Roseville or Harper Woods because I think that... You know, Roseville right now, most they're more complete right now. They're more balanced right now. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there. It'd be a good game for sure. But I'm going to take the Panthers in a good one against Harper against Harper Woods. So we'll see what happens there in that one. I'm um, going forward there in that one. And then there's A&T and River Rouge. River Rouge has had A&T's number the last few years. I mean, it really has. But something's different. When I look at this game. Rouge is coming off a tough 19-18 loss to Warren's East South. Last week. a and coming off a tough loss last week to um to um West Bluebill. So when I look at this matchup here. I, th I mean last year was 45-44. In favor of River Rouge. I see a shootout here again this year. I really do. Um. In this one, though, I'm going to take a and I think a and gets a revenge this year. They're going to get a measure of revenge. I think Isaiah Marshall has a big game. I don't trust Roots defensively in this one. Yes, they were they hung tough at Warren DSL, um, I still, but I still don't trust the Rouge in this game. So I'm going to take the Warriors over the Panthers in this one. Um, maybe by a touchdown, maybe with 10 points. So we'll see what happens there in that game. But I'm going to take the Warriors. Um, I think they get a measure of revenge. They've lost three straight to, um, you know, to River Rouge. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens in that one there in that game. Um, and then they have the red games. Um, Oxford and Chippewa Valley. Oxford, to me, is hit rock bottom. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough match against the Scott Merchant Chippewa Valley team. Yes, they won last year. Oxford won last year in a dramatic game. Um, but they just don't have the talent. Um, they're young this year. Very, very young. You're starting sophomores and juniors, especially on offense. It's going to be a very tall task against Chippewa Valley. Um, I'm going to take the Big Reds convincingly over Oxford. Um, 
So it's gonna be really it's gonna be really challenging for Oxford in this game against Chippewa Valley. So we'll see what happens there in that one, to say the least there. Um Battle of Four and Fours. Um you got um you got Stony actually we'll we'll wait on Stony Creek New Orleans Anchor Bay. Um let's go Clarkson Oak Park. Um Oak Park 0 and eight. Clarkston's been rolling on all cylinders six and two. I, I this could have shootout potential, but I doubt it. Um, I think Clarkson's gonna roll in this one pretty convincingly. Blow out. Um, they're gonna blow out. Um, you know they're gonna blow Oak Park out. Um, you know so we'll see what happens there. I I think Clarkston too much Ethan Clark. Doesn't matter who the quarterback is. I think Steve McCuzak starts. He's gonna have a big game here. Um, you can rest my kind another week getting ready for postseason competition. Um, so, but I, I think Clarkson's going to roll in this one over Oak Park, um, uh, pretty convincingly, um, in that game there. Um, Adams going to Runkle Field, taking on Sterling Heights Stevenson. Sterling Heights Stevenson has been a really disappointing team this year in the Mac Red. Um, they won last week blowing out Frazier 55-7. Um, but this is no, um, but this is no, um, Frazier. This is Rochester Adams. Don't be surprised if Adams puts at least 35 or 42 on Sterling Heights teams. Don't be surprised. And they run the offense called the Veer. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. Um, I don't see anybody touching Adams in that game. Um, Adams. Don't be surprised there's a running clock by the end of the first half. I'd be shocked that there isn't. So we'll see what happens there in that game. Some interesting games around the red here. Also, you got West Bloomfield and Utica Eisenhower. This one's in the swamp. Um, Utica Eisenhower, um, you know, they've been rolling. I mean, West Bloomfield, we know what they've been without Raekwon Nance. Nance was in full uniform against um, A&T last week despite the injury. But they're going to keep him out another week. Um, Utica Eisenhower obviously with Preston Crum at quarterback. Um, he's fully healthy now, so this makes it a really interesting game. Curious to see how West Bloomfield's defense goes up against um a very good Utica Eisenhower defense. Um, but w let's not forget West Bloomfield's got Samaj Morgan. They got Kenny Jones. Um, Devontae Pittman had a nice game against A and T last week. Um. I think, you know, a, I think West Bloomfield's going to roll in this game. Pretty, it'll be close, but I think the Lakers um, win at, swamp, at, at um, in the Swamp. I know last year's game was at Swinart, and they rolled there, and I don't really see any changes there. It'll be a tough game for West Bloomfield. It'll be a tough game for you guys, I'd say the least, going against a very good West Bloomfield team. But West Bloomfield defensively will be testing this game by a very good Ike team. Um, so we'll see what happens there, but I got West Bloop winning that one pretty convincingly in the swamp. We'll see what happens there in that one going forward there. Now we got four and four, um, Stony Creek taking on new Baltimore anchor Bay. Whoever wins this one's going to be in good shape to get in the postseason. loser basically is out. Um, in this game here, um, when it comes to playoff points, um, in this game here, I think Stony Creek's got a good chance to win this game. They have, yes, New Baltimore Inc. and Base played in the Mac Red, but they had a really tough loss to um, Roseville last week, 21 to three. Um, but I think Stony Creek, if they play like they did against Rochester last week, then I think they got a good chance to win this game. And I think they got a great chance to win this one. So I'm going to take the Cougars in this game against, um, Against the Tars, um, I think that um, it's going to be tight. It's going to be close. And we're going to see what happens in that one. But I got Stony Creek win that game. Get Hopefully get in the postseason. We'll see what happens there. And then last but not least, you got Lake, you got Celine and Lake Orion. Um, Celine's lost two straight games by combined, um, by combined 14 points. They have a very good quarterback in C.J. Carr. Um, Lake Orion is coming off a win against North Farmington. Um, I think playing in the OA compared to the SEC, um, I don't know, you know, when you look at this game here, last year, Celine beat Lake Orion 42-21. Um, I think the travel could be an issue here for Celine um, going up. Um, 
going up um telegraph um so when i look at this game here um i got lake orion in this game because i think the dragons will find a way in this one behind billy roberson um dominic novak has really proven himself to be a wide receiver very good wide receiver um tristan hill i think has a big game here in this one here so we'll see what happens in there but i got lake orion winning in, in that one i think getting in the playoffs at five and four so we'll see what happens going forward there Final thoughts. We'll see what happens. Um, good luck to everybody this week uh, competing. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, everybody, I'm signing off here. Um, take care. God bless everybody, and I will see you all next week, everybody. See you next week, OA Nation. God bless.